Many, many years ago, when I was much younger, less wise, slimmer, less hairy, could see properly without needing glasses, I stumbled across something which has had a profound influence on my life. To this point, I've always had a great passion and enjoyment for computer and video games. So, yes, this is going to be another channel by somebody who really should know better uh, at my age to talk about these sort of things. But I'm hoping that through the power of video and the written word, we should be able to convey that to you. And I hope you'll stick with me. Now, I thought the best way, having sort of tried about nine times so far to do an introduction video, to really sort of start off where I started off. And what I'm going to show you now was, was the thing which really got me into this. Uh, this isn't the original, uh, which is a bit of a shame, but I'm pleased to say that uh, a few years ago somebody very kindly bought me one of these systems and it was a very, very happy day to see it once again. I'll show you the, the, the game which really did it for me, and that is, as you can see there, uh, accounting light, there we go, Space Invaders on the 2600 wow there you go look at that cover there look at that cover you can see it or maybe not so there we go i will do something about the lighting at some point don't worry about that but as you can see look at that cover there that ah, ah something out of the 50s but that was the game that did it for me now forget whether the fact it was an accurate conversion of the arcade machine pff, made no difference to me at seven or eight years old playing that game hours on end going back and forth back and forth beep 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 beep, beep. Yeah, it just it just awoke something with me to the point that I played that game so much that on the inside of this thumb here, removing the joystick, you see, I actually got myself a blister from playing the game so much. Uh, that's how much it meant to me. And since then, um, like a couple of other things in my life, video games and computer games sort of stayed with me and i played all the the major systems played all some of the big big games the big arcade conversions from the 8-bit systems and then onto the uh console eras the early 90s and um you know mario kart and sonic and all those sort of things and right through to the current day where i've got so many different systems knocking around it's almost impossible to devote one time to them i suppose really that uh, i should be doing that but uh, no I, I prefer a bit of variety as you can see from behind me because we've got playstation 2 and there's gamecube up there and then we've got commodore 64 and commodore 64 and commodore 64 and you can't see that that, that sort of goes around there and then yeah all sorts of different stuff and um, pretty much every major console is covered there the, the obscure ones um, sit outside of my um remit i'm afraid because i just simply can't afford stuff like that uh, i was very fortunate to start collecting recollecting some of this stuff uh, back in the uh, late 2000s when it was still fairly cheap to do so uh, and um, you know as it's widely known the, the hobby of collecting old computer games is quite an expensive thing now uh, I started at the right time I was quite lucky and I can see why people use things like emulation and, and what have you but uh, I've tried that as well and it's very good to play certain games but nothing beats physical media I'm a very big fan of physical media as you can see yes now over the course of however long this takes me and you know as we get along uh, I'd like to explore some of that with you and share it with you because uh, that's what this community is all about sharing and and sort of swapping stories and and experiences and and you know finding people who enjoy the same thing as you and i do collect for a wide variety of systems uh, at the moment uh, i spend a lot of time collecting for ps2 and wii because the games are so cheap um, i don't really care about the quality uh, people do top tens best and worst and whatever I, I don't get into that. If the game is cheap, I will buy it. Uh, uh, yeah, I've had a a few funny experiences in my time. There's certain games I've picked up, uh, and certain games I refuse to pick up until I sort of decided. Well, if I don't pick them up now, I'm never going to pick them up, and, and they might be worth a whole pound next time I go in the shop. I am, I am the, the, the probably the cheapest game you may come across. People do five or ten pound challenges to sort of show they can buy a lot of games for five or ten pound. I do that every week. Um, and I, I go out with ten pound and I come back with fifteen games. They might be a load of crap. I don't care. 
Um, I like stuff to sit on shelves and I can look at it and be very proud to own it. And someday in the future, at some point, possibly maybe before I retire, they may be worth, I don't know, £3 each. I'm not in this to make a profit, let's put it this way. I'm in this because I like what I do. I like what I collect. I'm not here to sort of make money out of these sort of things. So I'm hoping that you'll stick with it from that one because, as you can see, like the games, it's a bit cheap looking at the moment. But we can work on that, I'm sure. Get some higher production values. And we've already got some stuff recorded, uh, which hopefully I'll be able to do some voiceovers for and, and talk you through that. You can really see just how bad I am at playing games. You'd have thought that put me off by now, but no, no, absolutely not. The most important thing is that you have fun doing it. Um, and that's what, we, that's what I'm here for, really. I, you know, playing games gives me a great amount to play, even the bad games. Even the games you put in there once again, i have never playing that again. And that's probably one thing I haven't um, sort of learned, because generally speaking, in my experience, when you know, I was buying games when I was younger, if a magazine gave a game a bad review... I would tend to give it a second chance by buying it. And then I'd realise that, yeah, they were right. It's not a good game. But I don't really care now because uh, I'll play something and think it's terrible. And then if I'm playing something which is, say, I don't know, 15, 20 years old, I'm going to go, well, what's the point? So what, what, what if it's a bad game? It's not going to make a difference now if it's a bad game. It made a difference back then if I was paying 15, 20, 30 quid for it. Now I'm paying pence for it, so why should I be annoyed about how bad a game is? Just try and find something good about it. Is the music good? You'll find that with one of the games I've done, Endura Racer on the Commodore 64. Terrible game. Awful game to look at. But it has a redeeming feature. The music is brilliant. And from that point of view, there is something to recommend it to people who like that. And of course, as we know from internet channels people do have an appreciation for music made on the Commodore 64 so from that point of view the soundtrack to Endure Racer is a thumbs up the rest of the game pff, well yeah you can chuck that in the bin in fact just record the sound off it and you know make a five minute recording and you're done move on to the next one yeah okay I've talked myself into a corner now so I'm going to stop here and I'm hoping that this will give you some intrigue as to what may go on if it doesn't okay fair enough we'll start again I'm going to start somewhere, um, so this is it, and we shall see how we get on. Stick with it, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, I'll find somebody out there who will appreciate what I'm trying to do. All the best. <laughs>